He's coming on shortly, huh? There we go. <laughs> there there you he go. goes. <laughs> man. I'm new to this. <laughs> hey, man. And I'm looking to, to try to figure out what I can do. I sent the request. Right. Uh, but, you know, I realize we look like two very old I know. men I know. trying to <laughs> figure out the VCR. So. <laughs> I know I'm an old man for sure. Yeah, <laughs> man. Man. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm pushing buttons. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking too. I'm trying to figure out what what's going on. Yes, How you sir. feeling, man? I feel great, brother. Happy Friday yeah. to you, man. How happy, you doing? Happy Friday, man. I'm good, brother. You know, just hang and maintain it. Yes, sir. You know, um, uh, uh, a week. You know, had a pretty busy week. Got you know more weeks, uh, more business ahead. So you know, just trying to maintain and you know uh, make something happen, brother. Yes, you know, sir. be productive during this this whole quarantine season. Yes, sir. Well, and you know, for us in Texas, you know, we kind of open up a little bit. So you know, that's kind of a yeah. So that's kind of a. So I can know, come to the, church soon or what? Uh, well, I don't know yet. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, right. You can come every Sunday online. Sunday online, right. Yes, sir. And yes, our sir. YouTube channel, too. So, you know, whichever yes, one sir. you want to do, man. Yes, sir. Bad. Yes, thank sir. you for having me, brother. I'm brother, I think you, I, I'm really honored, man, and um, it, to, to have you on here. I know I was on yours, man. I was honored to do that. Um, you, you, you've you been such a great encourager to me, man, and, and, and such a good brother, man, and, and you don't even know, like, I mean, you do know because we've talked about it, but, you know, the people don't know. Just, uh, yeah. um, I, you know, the way that we connected to me was so divine and, and so spiritual. And it it, um, it proved so many things in the word for me personally. And, and, oh, wow. And, and, and um, you know, you and the bishop so gracious, gracious to me, man, and welcoming. And it's something that, again... I told you that I told you during that weekend, brother, we would be connected yeah. for life, and 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 it's it's for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, your book, you know, shortly after that, I told you I I, I bought the book, I read it, and um, and it blessed me in such a way, brother. Thank um, you, man. It really, really did, and I I told others about it, and and I know that it blessed them too because they gave me feedback about that. Oh wow! And, and and yeah, and and some close brothers to me, um, and and one of my brothers actually, I'm gonna send you a link to my brother Will Catlett. Shout out to Will Catlett. Um, um, he has a thing right now out about service that I mean, he really you know read your book before doing, and and it and it's and it's really geared toward actors, and people in film and television, but from a spiritual point, yeah, and faith based, and and um and your book inspired a lot of his his um approach as well wow um but i just want to i just actually want to in this you know for the next few minutes man the next, you know however long i can have you man i want to you know be in service to you and let everybody know about this book hardcore yeah, that they I, need I, to go get. I appreciate it man you know the the book uh though i wrote it and many people you know most people know me from uh you know the church world yeah uh the reality is i have people from all sex in, uh, of the world and all kind of different careers read the book and and really find uh, true um, encouragement and, and inspiration from the book. Yes, Much sir. like like you indicated with with your friend, and yeah. I'm excited about that. Uh, I've had people who really work for Fortune 500 and 100 companies yeah, yeah. Uh, read the book and say, you know, had I had this along my managerial career, then you know I could have saved a lot of steps. Right. You know, and, and I've had I've had uh, psychiatrists read the book and tell me how great it is uh, along with pastors and, and different uh, leaders in the church just saying that the book is not is not so one-dimensional no. that anybody who picks up the book can find something in it if you are interested in being uh, a better leader in your home in uh, in your group of friends you know at work the book is for you it's not just a book uh, for people who serve in church Although that's that's my initial audience, that's my best. Yeah. But many people have found it beneficial throughout every walk of life, and I'm just thrilled about that, man. Yeah, and everybody on the, that on here, that before you came on, I don't know if you're watching that. That's what I was explaining to them too. I, I really think that, and that's the one of the wonderful things about it is put in such a way that no matter where what your belief is or what walk you you know you're you're walking in life, you know whatever your occupation is, whatever your dream and goal is. 
it's a it's an, an, a great guideline um, for you, man. I want to ask you, man, if you answer a couple questions for me. Sure. Man. Um, yeah, absolutely, man. Um, you got me, bro. Okay. Um, uh, well, one, can you tell people who, for those that who who don't know who Antar Muhammad is um, exactly, like what you do um, professionally every day? So, so uh, what many people um, don't know, because I'm not I'm not one of the guys who touts titles and positions yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. I'm really more about the chapter I wrote in the book, Do Not Shine, Serve. Er, yeah, I'm going to get to that. Yeah. That, I get, that I provide. So I am the, um, the assistant uh, to Bishop T.D. Jakes. Right. And so it depends on what world I'm in. If I'm in church, I'll say the adjutant, the armor bearer, you yeah. know, or if I'm in, in, in Hollywood, I'll say the PA. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 Or if yeah, yeah, we're in the yeah, business yeah. world, I may say, you know, executive assistant, or, yeah, yeah. you know, um, you know, it just depends on where we're at, but, but that's who I am. I'm uh, Bishop Jake's assistant. I've been doing that for, uh, gosh, man, uh, 10 years. Wow. Uh, actually, uh, September will make 10 years. And before that, I was five years of volunteering helping him in right. his office. So right. you add it all up, that's about 15, 15 years right. that I've, I've been doing this, man. And it's been a, an incredible journey. What inspires uh, you to write the book? So, you know, I, um, I wrote the book big, big, based off some teachings that I have been doing for a few years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some leadership, some uh, staff training that I've done, some servant leadership principles I've learned. But, you know, I, I wanted to put pen to paper because I saw a lot of people who love to say, I'm a leader. I'm a natural born leader. And, and I'm, you know, I want, I'm called to lead people and I, I want to be a leader. And everybody wants that title. But the reality is, if you're going to be effective, you can be given the position by anybody. Right. But if you want to be effective in your leadership, you have to have a servant's heart, right. which means that you have to have the heart, the heart and the concern of everybody who you lead with an attitude of serving them. Right. That's, you're leading your family, you're leading a corporation, you're leading this country. The reality is you're serving everybody who's under your authority because everybody who is under your authority is subject to your word and subject to your decisions. So right. if your decisions and your word are not sound and solid, then your decisions are gonna affect uh, everybody who is underneath you. And so you'll you'll have you know rapid spill out uh, because you don't you know you're not a servant at heart and and here's the thing about it if you're a servant at heart people can tell and you'll earn and and receive the respect of everybody who follows you and, and here's the thing about it many people won't respect but but you can't get respect by making people fear you. Right. Okay. Respect right. must be earned. Yeah. And once they earn it, then you have buy in. But right. you don't get buy in from people if you have to force your way for them to like you or to do what you say. Right. Mm, that's good. Um, when did what when did you know that you were called to serve? Um, I think at a very young age, because the reality is when you are really truly called to serve, it's something you do without anybody even asking you to do it. Same thing with leadership. And, 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 and here's the reality. Whatever that gift is down inside of you, you do it by accident and you don't even know that you are doing it. You're doing it, yeah. You flow into it. And many people put a title on it and the reality is you just call it life. Mm. You don't think about it. Because you end up going into it because that's what's inside of you. Right. So you end up walking into it. You end up doing it. You can do it. You can wake up in the middle of the night and put your feet on the floor and go right into it because that's what you're gifted at. That's who you really are. And so I can't, I can't tell you a date because yeah, yeah. that's who I really am. Right, right, you right. What I'm right. Saying? And, not, and not like a date, but, but yeah, when, yeah. when, you, when you, you said, okay, this is what I'm going to do with my life and that, and that, and that I'm, 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 uh, I'm going to take this as far as I can take it. You know, well, I'm, I'm, you, it, you it, know, it, the reality is God has a, a, a great 
way of, of having you to stumble into your destiny. Right. And stumble into what you're called and, and really supposed to be. Right. Because what he'll do is he'll he'll have you in a place mm. and then suddenly it feels like okay, either this door is opening or this door closed. Yeah. And what happens is you end up doing something and you do you'll be doing it by accident mm -hmm. and something will click inside of you and you'll get fulfillment out of it right. and suddenly doors will start opening right the, the, according to the scripture the bible says that your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men right. and if you let your gift do the talking and the leading then that's when god really opens doors i can't tell you that i knew i would be here 20 years ago I can't I can't tell you that. I had other ideals for my life, but God knew and through a series of steps that he led me on, he led me here. I always knew there was something that he was calling me to do. I just didn't know what. What it was. But you listened to that call. You 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 followed that call. You didn't stray away from that call and go for um uh you know necessarily what you your your um, what your flesh was desiring at the time. I and I I tried. There's a few things I tried. Okay. But they never worked out for me. And and suddenly I came to the realization of okay, maybe that's just not for me. And then through those doors closing, mm -hmm. God begins to show me and reveal exactly what it is that he wants me to do. Right. Sometimes God shows you where you are to go next by closing the door oh, on yeah. something you thought was now. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yes, sir. That's real yeah. good. Um, there's something you say in the book. Um, I don't want to misquote the chapter. I want to say maybe three, but it, it really, it was really powerful for me um, in what I do. And mm -hmm. and at, for professionally, you know, being an actor, being a performer, a musician, and, you know, um, living my life publicly. Um, and that was with visibility comes responsibility. Exactly. And That's uh, expand on that for, just a little bit. No, please expand on that. Please. So, that so, so I wrote powerful, a, and I think that people uh, don't recognize that. Um, and I've even heard you preach on this, so I know you got a good word yeah. on this. So, uh, yes, sir. So the, the I wrote it off of the premise of anytime you're going to take a role or position. Yeah. In a in a company, in a church, in an organization, mm -hmm. that once people now identify you as part of that organization or that place, or even that family, you're you are no longer your own. Right. You are now a represent a representative of that organization, of that community, of that family, of that church, or whatever. Yeah. You are no longer your own. You are now a represent a representative of that. So everything you do, you post, you um, yeah. everything you say is now people are going to take that as a representation of that organization. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing about it. People think that, oh, I can post something because it's my social media. Well, the stats say years ago, and I don't, it may be uh, even shorter now, yeah. that when you post something online, you have exactly two seconds before Somebody can screenshot it, and now it, you you no longer have control over it. Jesus. So if you're going to ask God to put you in a big platform, to take you higher, mm -hmm. to, to make your name great, yeah. just know that the higher he takes you, the more fire that, and more heat you're going to have to live under. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot be somebody great and still walk around as if you're – you're not like you don't have this responsibility right. right so the reality is for me you know i am my own person i'm i am my own being but the reality is when people see me they see me as a representation of bishop jakes right. as a representation of the potter's house right. so that means that anytime i get ready to do something or i go to the store I even go to the store and people will ask me where is Bishop and I'm, I'm thinking, sure well, not, well, come on, he's bro. not come here on. at Kroger look. with me yeah. but they see yeah. you as just a name badge they see you as the representation they see you as the yeah. company yeah. so you lose your identity so yeah. if you don't want to be great or if you don't want to lose your identity 
don't ever try to be great or don't ever try to have <laughs> recognition because every that was time so good. God that gives was so you recognition, good. you're going to lose just a little bit more of your own privacy and your own will. Yes, sir. That makes yes, sense. sir. Yo, does it? You know, you talk yeah. to <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, and the reality is you are not your own. No more. You you are yeah. you are not your own. Mm -hmm. You belong to the community, quite yeah, honestly. Yeah. And sometimes you can feel like a prisoner, but I think God puts those uh borders around you mm -hmm. to keep you and to harness you because mm -hmm. if he did not, then the you, the flesh you will go out and would do whatever he wants to. Mm -hmm. But because you now represent him oh my or God. represent something higher, wow. he says, I'm going to use this wow. to hold you back. I'm going to use it for my good. It doesn't feel good, but I'm going to use it for my good because now you no longer can just do what you want to do because you are representing me or you're representing a company, you're representing something higher, so no longer are you representing yourself alone. Wow, that is so good. That is so good. Um, when, 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 you know, this is something I've been wanting to ask you for a long time, I never asked you, is sure. when, when, did you, when did you first go to the Potter's house? What was that? Like, when did you um, enter the, into that? So uh, a funny thing, you know, um, I was aware of the building because the, the, the former church that used to be there, my great grandmother and grandmother used to be there. Right. Um, right. And so uh, I, I was aware of the building. And then in 1998, I started going to the um, to the church. No, 1997, I started visiting the church in 98. I actually joined uh, the church when I would hear Bishop preach and speak. It was like something, it was, it was really eerie and spooky because it's like, how does he know what I'm dealing with? How, how are you, have you been watching me? What's going on? Yeah. And, and there was a drawing, a wooing there that I couldn't leave it anymore. And, and you know, I, I felt like that's where God has me. Yeah. It's it's no longer about me. God is pulling me somewhere yeah. Yeah. And, he's, and, I, and I'm meant to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so to answer your question, uh, over twenty years now. Twenty years now, yeah. And then, yeah. and then, and once you enter that into into that wooing, um, which I totally relate to. Once you once you entered into that wooing, and and then your service naturally because that's who you are. Yeah. You 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 just naturally with yourself in that environment. Absolutely. Mm, I. Uh, that's good. You know, here's the funny thing about about this is that. Um, when I start my seminars, what I do is um, I, I tell them my testimony. So when I first started in 1998, I started on our security and, and safety team, right? Right, right, right. And so I had a post uh, the first night. Is it, it, it is. It, it's in the book. So you got to get it. The, the book is, uh, somebody asked, the book is available on Amazon, oh, yeah. barnesandnobles.com, mm -hmm. even my website, antoinemohammed.com, and iBooks. Yes, but yes. Um, you know, I first started out in a hallway that had uh, Mrs. Jakes's office on one end, and we had a dining hall on the other end. And in the middle, it was my my job to make sure people who came in that hallway used the restroom, go back into service, and not go to either extreme. Well, we deemed that as potty patrol. It wasn't really what we called it, but we just called it potty right, patrol. Right, 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 right. And because of my faithfulness and because of my service. Wow. Uh, and because, I know we'll talk about it, but, but I never put myself on display, but I allowed my service to be on display. Right. I've gotten to go from there to uh, helping Bishop Jakes out and volunteering with him to eventually becoming his full-time assistant. Yeah. And traveling the world yeah. several times over, yeah. sitting at and uh eating dinner uh with heads of state uh in different countries and, and uh business leaders and thought leaders in this world yeah. and just some amazing experience simply uh from from just being a servant. And that's it. Man, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Um and it's it's incredible, you know, that it's the it, okay, well, let's talk about this. In chapter seven, which is my lucky number seven, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. um, 
is my is my favorite chapter, honestly. Um, and not just because of, of the number that that you picked to use this, but the the the, the premise of the chapter, um, which is don't shine, serve. serve. Yep. I, I, we got to you got to give us something on that because I mean I got the book, I have the book, and and but and I have the 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 lesson in that. Um, it really for me just really quick. It. I had to turn a, it that that chapter, brother, made me really turn a mirror on myself. Wow! It really, really did, you know. And and you know, and I, you know, like I say, I, this isn't about me, but it it did. It made me turn a mirror on myself. So I think that 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 whole concept of don't shine, serve, and based off what you just said about how you've journeyed, yeah. right? Yep. And I see it, you know, and I and I see your, but your service has created for you again. Again, it's, it's made room for you in, yeah. in such a way, you know what I'm saying? And and that and again, please don't shine, serve. So uh, in in the chapter, do not shine, serve. Mm -hmm. I talk about the fact that it's not about you; it's about the service that that you are rendering. Right? Yeah. So many people in, in this age right now are so busy trying to. Uh, make their pictures go viral, make their videos go viral, help me yeah. go viral, become yeah. this instant star, yeah. this instant celebrity, that now they're no longer worried, uh, worried or concerned about putting their gifts forward. They're trying to put themselves and their personalities forward. Yeah. And, but the reality is, if, if I go back to the scripture, the Bible says that your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. It never said you would. It said your gift. And I am a firm believer if you put your gifting out there and it comes in your body, then God is going will open doors for you. But the problem is so many people are trying to put their own personalities out there mm. that by the time you get ready to introduce your gift, I'm no longer interested in the gift because the packaging that has come in has so nauseated me that it turned me off and I don't even care about the gift you have because the, the package that the gift is in has has really done a bad job of representing what you have in store. So the reality is, if you want to be great, don't try to put you on display, put your gift on display. Right. Let your gift do the talking and you sit back and watch God open doors for you because you allowed the gift that he gave you to open doors. It's not about you. It's about the gifting. And if you do that, God will put your gift on display and put your gift on the stage. And guess what? It's in your body. But many people are trying to put their bodies on display Ooh. and put who they are on display. And right. their gift is laying dormant. Nobody even knows you can do this. Nobody has even heard you. Some people, and, and, and let, me, let me make this addendum. It's not necessarily everything that you see on the stage as a gift either a stage in your world or a stage in my world. Yes, Some sir. people are gifted at math. Yes, Some sir. people are gifted at editing books. Some yeah. people are, are gifted at, at creating uh, safe spaces and peaceful environments. Yes, so sir. don't ever think that you're, you're not gifted because it's not on the stage and it's not being displayed out there and everybody's not running to do it. You may have a gift landing inside of you that nobody is aware of that you feel ashamed of because it's not displayed and going viral on social media. Put your gift out there and your gifting will m make room for you and God will make a way for you and bring you before great men. Who knows if you put that engineering mind to work, how God is going to use it. Maybe Exxon or somebody is going to call you and say we need what you have, right. but we don't. We don't need your personality. We need your gifting, but right. we don't even know that you have that gift because all we see is the personality. Right, that's so good. That makes sense. That makes so much good sense. That's so very yeah. good. Um, there's a there's something because I was reading earlier today. Brother, in, um, in, in Mark um, 9, uh, 34 and 35, um, about the servant and, and um, whoever wants to be first mm -hmm. to, to, to serve um, and to be a servant, a servant to all. 
Yep. Um, what, in your opinion, makes a good servant? Just in your humble well, opinion. In my humble opinion, let me let me just first first of all tell everybody who is watching. No matter what position you hold, no matter what you do, you can be a CEO, you can, you know, you can be an astronaut, whatever you do. I get, I'm telling you right now, you are a servant. Right. Here's the reality. That's Anything good. you give your time, your energy, your efforts to, you are serving it. Yeah. Whether it, whether you're a gardener and you're spending all your time out there and fly, working in, in plants and flowers, you're a servant to it. Whether It doesn't matter what it is. Anything you've given your time, your energies, your efforts to, you are a servant of it. Mm -hmm. To me, what makes you good at it is if it ha doesn't have to be forced, it comes out of here. Mm -hmm. Anything that, that has to be forced isn't real. Mm -hmm. And if you got to force it, or fake it, it's not, it's, it's not really true. It's not really you. There's a, a chapter I wrote in a book called Desire Versus Heart. Desire Versus Heart, yes, sir. I talk about that, and I compare it this way. Mm -hmm. Your heart is the core. It's really who you are. Mm -hmm. At your, in your heart, this is who you are. Your desire is your emotional self. It's your mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. And just like the weather, it changes several times during the day. My God. But many people are making major, major life decisions from here, yeah. never considering here. Mm -hmm. So if you don't consider here and you make all your decisions from your head mm -hmm. and not from your core, then it, what happens three months down the road and you get to looking around and wondering, I wonder why this didn't work like I thought it would. You're crying on your pillow. You're thinking, this didn't work like I thought it would. You know why? Because it was never meant for you to <laughs> do it. It's not really who you are. Mm -hmm. It's something you thought of, but it's not who you are. Mm -hmm. And many people are trying to make major decisions, mm -hmm. move or, or date somebody or, or, or uh, start a company, start a job. I'm, I'm sure you see it too. All the Many time. people, they want to leave their job simply because they were in a play in high school. Yeah. I get it. I'm not knocking that. But yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean that's who you are. Right. You, had a, you had people clap for you and tell you how good you were. Yeah. And you had an emotional response to it. Yeah. And now you quit. And now you're, you're almost Ooh. homeless. And it's been six years. And you're wondering, why isn't this thing working like I thought it would? Yeah. For some people, that's a journey. But for other people, that's really not what you were supposed to do. Yeah. You made that from a wrong place. Right. In your heart, you know you're an accountant. In yeah. your heart, you know you need to be doing something else. But yeah. you led with the wrong thing. You led with your emotions. Yeah. And those emotions are going to change. Because in the morning, if it's raining, you feel like you'll look down and depressed. But in the yeah. afternoon and the sun come out, and you feel yeah. like you want to yes, get out sir. and run yes, away. Yes, Stop sir. making big decisions out of an emotional place. Okay, that's beautiful. Um, you said something just now about the core. In the yeah. book, in the book, you have a, a, a breakdown about what the core is. Um, can yeah. you share with us or just a little bit? I don't want to give too much away because I want to buy the book on Amazon. And and wherever books are sold is on, on um, uh, BarnesandNoble.com. Barnes and Noble. Yeah. And let me tell you too, if you go, you can go to my website, AntarMohammed.com. Yeah. Yes, sir. And if you buy it from there, then I'll actually sign it for you as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you can you can do it from there, AntarMohammed.com. Okay. Yeah, I talk about the core, the convictions, the observations, the reality, and uh, the empowerment. The empowerment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. when you when you. Here's the funny thing: when you write a book, you got to try to remember it all. And, and so, so you know, let's let's talk about um, the core, uh, the C, which is your conviction. Right. Don't make a solid place from a from a shaky place, or solid decision rather from a shaky place. Mm -hmm. You don't have a conviction about it. Mm -hmm. It's not in you to do it. Mm -hmm. Don't try to make a big decision from a shaky place. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to build that house on sand. Mm -hmm. The sand was never meant to hold the house. Mm -hmm. The sand was only meant to be there uh, if, if needed for something small. You can put a tricycle on there or you can put a playhouse on there, but you can't put a real house on there because right, right. it's sand. 
You right. got to get a, a firm, solid foundation of cement if you're going to put something big on it. If you right. don't want them big, then put, keep putting something on sand. The rest of them is observation, reality, and empowerment. Yeah. You know, and, it's, it's uh, funny that what you just said, uh, Good Brother, is, is, is very um, profound and pungent now Yes, sir. in the times that we are in right now, um, I think, you know, as far as building a house on a rock as opposed to sand. I think we're, we're, yeah. we're kind of we're in this space where we have to look and see what our house is built on. Yeah right now that's right that, like, that is true you know this this quarantine thing has taught us a lot and yeah. and made a lot of people go and dig on the inside and find out who you really are yeah and and some people after you know some people are feeling like a lion trapped in a cage right now once the gates are open mm -hmm. then you know you feel like you're gonna run out back into the free world and 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 capture <laughs> what everything you've been planning right now and, and I wrote something in the book. I have the Ten Commandments of... of uh, I was going to get to that. I was going to get okay. to that. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Please. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Perfect Good. segue. Go ahead. So, so one of them is focus on the passion and not profit. Uh-huh. And the importance of that is it gets back to the heart versus desire. But the reality is many people see those dollar signs and you think you can do it. But if you don't have the passion for it, then you don't have the drive and you're, it's, you're not going to stay up and uh, to really make it happen. Right. And you're going to start seeing it as a burden instead of a, uh, what you're called to do. If it's something you're really called to do, yeah. hours can go by, and you're not even affected by the hours. In fact, people have to remind you to eat. They have to remind you to sleep. They have to remind you to do something different because you're so driven by it. But, but, you, it, but chasing the money will never drive you by it. Right. Chasing the money will only get you a few dollars, but it won't give you the passion you need and the fulfillment you need to keep it going. Right. Yes. Amen to that. Um, I, I wrote, you know, and because of I, the, you, you left five, there's five commandments in here, and then you um, leave room to, for for the reader to have, you know, to continue their own five to make it ten, and I think that is a wonderful. Um, it's just a it's just a wonderful exercise. I did it um, as well as the actions and 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 it's just yeah it's a wonderful exercise. Um, I want to ask you there's a, there's something there's a quote in the book that I love uh, I love 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 it. There's a lot of quotes in the book that I love, but we're just going through a few. Uh, um, you can't be mighty and sensitive at the same time. Yeah, um, <laughs> that one's a so that's so good. I love that. You cannot be mighty and sensitive at the same time. Which and for means all you that, actors out there, or you, no matter what you're doing out there, and you have to feel like you have to put yourself on the auction block for people, know that this is, listen up. Please continue, brother, pardon me. Because if you're going to be mighty, right, mm -hmm. you're going to have to have a certain level of fortitude and tough skin. Yeah. Because as you get ready to climb, as you get ready to go higher, people are going to be hitting you and swatting at you. Even those who you think that that will love you and that, that you think they will support you. And you got even family you think are going to support you. And uh, people are asking to pin the name of the book. It's Hardcore. Hardcore. H -A -R -T. Now, I don't know how to pin nothing. So Okay, yeah. I, that's, I can yeah, pin I, my I, 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 Yeah, I wish I knew how to do that, y'all. <laughs> The next time we talk, <laughs> we talk, you talking? I mean, this is yeah. dinosaur one. We and talk, two, yeah, right? man, we we talking to old men. Yeah, um, but uh, this is it right here. It's hardcore, H E A R T. Right. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's available. The link is on my bio. And, yeah, and and, uh, and I'll, I'll, have my a, website. I'll put a link on the story when I post this yeah, too yeah. for it as well. Thank you. So you cannot be mighty and sensitive at the same time, which means. Sometimes you're going to have to make decisions that are tough to you. Right. Sometimes you're going to have to make decisions that are tough for people around you. So you cannot be mighty, and, and, and listen to this, you cannot be mighty and always care about what people think. Right. It, because right. it doesn't matter. This is my philosophy in doing this. How somebody feels about, you, about me is none of my business. Right. Now, everybody you want to be like, that's oh, fine. Right. You will love people to, to like you. You love people to 
you know, uh, think highly of you and, and high regards. But if you know that you've been a good person and that you have done well by this person, how the person feels about me is none of my business. So I'm going to get up every morning and I'm going to keep doing what I need to do. And, then, and, and whether you like me or not, that ain't got nothing to do with me. That's not my business. If I ever done you wrong or mistreated you or nothing like that, I'm going to keep going because you know why? I got something to do. And if you're going to be mighty, you got to have that attitude. And you got to see the destiny at hand and the gold at hand and not necessarily what people think because they, those people's opinions are going to come and go. It's much like uh, Jesus. On the week he was to be crucified, in the beginning of the week, people were saying Hosanna and throwing palm leaves. By the end of the week, people were saying crucify him. And all of that, you got to just keep going because people can, will, and do change. And as long as you keep worrying and concerned about how they think and how they feel, you will never be great and you will never do what you're called to do because you're so concerned and worried about what they think. They're going to always have an opinion. I don't care what you do. Somebody's going to have an opinion if you do something right, according to them. They're going to have an opinion you if you do something wrong. Let me, ask this, let me ask this last point. Yeah. Here's the reason why. This goes to another point I have in the book, the reason why you don't want to let people change you. Uh -huh. Okay? If you let somebody change you, they come into your life and they change you. Uh -huh. Right, they make you this, and they morph you into this person that they wanted you to be by manipulation or whatever. Everybody who comes into your life now thinks that that's who you are, and you start running people out because they no longer like the new representation of you. Or some of the people who have been in your life, they say, I no longer want to be a part of this guy's life because I don't like who he's changed it into. Now, this person who has changed you, who has manipulated you who has used you, this person is gone. They, they are long gone. They died, move on, change jobs or whatever. Right. This person has left, but the representative they have morphed you into is still here. And you're still losing people or you're still uh, having people run away from you because this new person is in your body and taking control. Mm -hmm. But that's not really who you are. That's somebody who you let, who you ha have allowed yourself to change into. Uh -huh. Don't allow any temporary person to make a permanent change in your life. Uh -huh. That's very good. That is so good. Um, I see how much time we got. Okay, we got a few minutes. Um, okay, investment. There's a there's there's a there's another quote in the book that I love. It's early on in the book. Um, it's very good. The book again, you guys, is hardcore. It's at antarmohammed.com and uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever fine books are sold. And right now in the house is a perfect time to read this um, and it's for all walks of life from yeah. fatherhood motherhood no matter what you do if you are a, a, a banker a businessman an actor an actress a musician whatever this is it um, investment without empowerment leads to frustration I love that can you please expound on that a little bit? Yeah, so I wrote that in, in the chapter talking about building your team. Yes, sir. And your team is a reflection of you. Mm -hmm. And that's not just a team in church, a team mm -hmm. of volunteers, or mm -hmm. even a team of people you have around you at work. That can be a team of people who you choose to, to have influence in your life, your friends or your circle. Mm -hmm. And here's the, here's the thing about it. I wrote three eyes in the book about building your team. I wrote the the um, investments, yeah, I wrote the interactive and I wrote the interview. Yeah. And the interview phase is where you talk to people uh, who maybe you're thinking about bringing close. They don't even know you're interviewing them, but you're talking to them. Right. You can find out more in the book. I right. talked to them about <laughs> interactions is where you end up finding out from other people who know them, it's, uh, you know, what this person is really like. Or sometimes especially if you're in a position of power, people don't show you their true, the true person of who they are. Amen. You may find out this person oh, is really a lot different than who you think they are based on somebody else's interactions with them. And the third one is investment. And investment or empowerment without investment is a dangerous thing because yeah. how can you expect somebody to think like you or to, to act like you in your stead if you never made the investment in that person. 
You're wanting an investment <laughs> and a withdrawal from somewhere you've never made a deposit into. Ooh. So you can't expect people to do that and to have anything for you to withdraw from because you never made the proper investment. And many people are being frustrated at work and everywhere else because you keep expecting a withdrawal, but you never made the proper investment. At you home. got to invest first Ooh. before you can get that That's withdrawal good. back. That's really good. Now, people are thinking, okay, you know, you've been around, so, you know, you should just do what I say. But if I don't understand <laughs> why you're doing it, then how can you expect me to do it like you or in your stead because yeah. I don't have that mindset. I see your actions, but I don't know your mind. Right. Mm. Very good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. For those that are tuning in or just tuned in, the book is Hardcore. My brother, Antar Muhammad, is a wonderful, wonderful man of God. And, and my brother, like I say, we, we, we um, fellowship and keep in touch um, beyond this, the, the internet. And um, one thing I want to ask you, brother, is how do you maintain... I mean, you're an author, you know, you're, you're, you're a minister. Um, I watched, I watched you preach several times. Um, uh, and, and, and very good words, by the way. Um, you. you are a father, husband, please. How, that's, and, and I can say, and you are the, the assistant, the right hand to the, the, the biggest and the best, in my opinion, uh, sure. bishop in the world. So, and that's, I mean, for those that know T.D. Jakes, I know everybody that follows me knows T.D. Jakes. Um, you know um, how, how, you know, that a, a big of a responsibility that is. And, and yeah. just with your family and, and traveling the world and all over and all over the actual world, not just, you know, international travels. Yeah, the world. So, for, yeah. yeah, for a long time. Um, and, and for periods of time, I know you're gone, you're gone for months sometimes and, and, and weeks and weeks. So how do you juggle all of that? Uh, very carefully. Um, you know, Bishop Jakes uh, has a saying that you don't let the same thing slip every day. So maybe you come in and, you know, you're, uh, you know, maybe you're great at, um, you know, you're great at business, but maybe the, the, the family, you know, you don't spend as much time. Or maybe you, maybe you spend more time with the family today and business suffers a little bit. Or maybe you, you know, you, you're in the studio, and so, you know, all of the other curricular activities have to suffer. The problem is you have the deficit when the same thing suffers every day. Right. And so I, I even wrote a chapter in there called Balance. Yeah. And I talk about the importance of having balance. And this is what I want all of your readers, I mean readers, I want all the readers, I want all of the watchers right now, everybody that's watching this live, I want you to get ready to text this sentence or to type this sentence or to write this sentence out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a sentence that's going to help you to find balance in your life, to help you to find ba balance when times are tough. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Here's the sentence. Sorry, I'm trying to get this camera. No, you got it. Take your time. Here's the sentence. No. No. No is a complete sentence. No is a complete sentence. You don't have to be available for everybody. You don't have to do everything that everybody wants you to do. No is a complete sentence. Stop trying to do things that you don't want to do. Right. No is an absolute complete sentence. And and you'll you you won't believe at first how liberating it is because many people will try to will try to guilt you into doing it, guilt you into helping them, guilt you into coming to see them, guilt you, and it, it, especially if they find that you got some free time, they, they're going to try to guilt you into it. Mm -hmm. But no is a complete sentence because here's the reality. If they don't get you, they'll get somebody. If they don't get you to come help them, they'll get somebody to come help them. That's no good. is an absolute complete sentence. And once you learn that sentence, you'll learn a, and you'll have a lot of freedom in your life. Okay. That is so good. No is a complete sentence. I no hope you guys got that. Sentence. I got it. I, I totally got it. <laughs> Absolutely. No. Uh -oh. Let me ask you um, about Dads United. I know you're yeah. a father. I'm a father. I got two girls. You got two girls. Um, 
tell the people about Dad United. I know a lot of fathers is on here. Yeah. Let's talk about yeah. it. In fact, my my youngest just texted me to tell you hello. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, so the, Dad United was founded uh, in 2015, and the premise of that is I wanted to show the world two things: mm -hmm. that good dads do exist, and I wanted to give the good dads out there motivation, encouragement, and and hope, mm -hmm. because it's my philosophy or my thought that there are a lot of great programs out there for my sisters, and I'm and I'm proud of those. I'm happy for those. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of great programs out there to build up my sisters, to build up my moms, to build up my black moms, but there are hardly none at all for my fathers out there. And especially men of color, there's nobody really talking to them and saying, man, I want to I want to see you better. Not, not you as the father. You as the father is great, but I want to see you as the man. Yeah. Because if the, if the man isn't, isn't doing well, then the father won't be doing well. Yeah. So I, I did it because yeah. I wanted to sh tell my fathers out there who many of them are doing this job and has never had a representation in front of them. So I kind of want to be a voice of a father to yeah. some of them, a voice of a man, of a dad in their ear to tell them to get up, you can do it. You can make it. I don't care what anybody says. You can do it. Get back up again. Stop being lazy. Stop procrastinating. You can do it. I believe in you. Right. And I've gotten letters and, and uh, emails from people all over the world talking about how impactful uh, Dad United is. And, and that's really the, the focal point is to build up my fathers and to show them that you do mean something. That you're not just a wallet or the taxi cab or the Uber now or Lyft, uh, no shade. Uh, you know, you are you are somebody. Right. You are a man. You are a person. And I care about you. And and that's the premise of Dad United. I think it's wonderful. I think it's needed. Um, and and I think it's 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 something that, like you said, there's so many programs for our sisters, and and those are needed too. And those are wonderful. Absolutely. But. but um, um, speaking to the men is very, very important. Um, I was I was uh, privileged to be at the um, um, the men's meeting in January, you oh, know, yeah. and, and for Master Builder. Uh, excuse me, in December. Excuse me, not January, yeah. December, and that was incredible and and Whoa. so impactful um, to the men of God and 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 to fathers too. You know, yeah. like you said, it, it, I saw it trickle down. Um, that was 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 an incredible, brother. Um, give them the website one more time, brother, please. Sure. the The website is antarmohammed.com. Mm -hmm. A N T A R. I'll, I'll put it back up again. antarmohammed.com. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you can order your copy of of uh, Hardcore, and I'll sign it for you. Yeah. You can also go to Amazon and and search Hardcore. You can go to BarnesandNobles.com. It's available on iBooks. Um, and you can order your copies there as well. And um, I, I thank you, man, for this opportunity. I brother, no, I, I, I'm so honored. This, this is a privilege. I just, I, I'm so honored, brother, to have this uh, conversation, man, for the people, brother. I felt like it was something that was needed. God put it on my spirit. Um, and, and, and one, to, to, to serve in any way that I can. Um, I've got one question before you go. We've got a lot of time sure. to cut us off. Um, um, for those that are out there that feel like they have a servant's heart, but sin or uncertainty or anxiety is keeping them, holding them back, what would you say to them? Uh, that if you can go back and fix yesterday, then do it. But if you can't, then you got to realize that in a, just a couple of hours, today will be yesterday. Mm -hmm. in just a few hours right now we'll be back then <laughs> and so if you do not mm -hmm. take Good. hold of everything you see and hear mm -hmm. and go after it pretty soon you gonna, you will live in regret of what you could have done and the worst thing in the world is to get old and have regret because no matter what age or stage you're at right now, if you're watching this, you'll never feel as good as you feel right now. You'll never be as strong as you are right now. You'll, you'll never have this moment again. You'll never have this moment again. And man, I, I feel something, brother, and I feel led 
if you don't mind, I want to pray for somebody do who, who, whose dreams and visions and goals are laying dead in you. I pray right now, Father, that you would restore somebody mm -hmm. and revive their dreams, mm -hmm. revive the hope in you, revive the hope in themselves, revive the faith in themselves, strengthen them. You gave